let's face it, buying a home can be an intimidating process. I think that a lot of people can find this to be a little bit confusing. There's so many steps to this. And in some cases, people don't even know where to start. One of my clients put it best when they told me, they said, I don't know what I don't know. And that really resonated with me. I thought about that, you know, and I always took it on as my job to try and help provide a better understanding so that I could make sure that there was nothing missed and that everyone felt comfortable going through the process. So in today's video, we're going to break down a step-by-step -step guide on the steps to successfully buying a home. With that being said, let's just jump right in. So the first thing that you want to consider before you do anything, before you set out looking for properties or any of the other steps that we're going to go over today is the first thing you want to think about, are you really ready to buy? You know, are you in a position where you have stable employment? Do you have a better idea of where you want to live? What does the next five years look like? This is not the best time to be purchasing transitional housing. You know, if you think you're just looking for something for the next year, then maybe renting is still a good idea. So you want to consider your situation, where you're living, what that looks like, and if you're truly ready. If, uh, if you've done this and you're feeling like you're in a good place, then it's time. Well, then let's talk about those steps. The first thing to consider is your budget. So I think it's easy to start by considering how much are you paying in rent currently? So if you have been paying a certain amount in rent, then how much does it allow you to save? Have you been able to save for a down payment? Keep in mind, if you purchase a home and you have a higher mortgage payment than what you're paying in rent right now and you haven't been able to save money, then it may not be a good idea. So you want to consider a budget on how much you're going to be comfortable paying every month on a mortgage. Now, when you're paying a mortgage, you have other expenses, such as you have your, your mortgage payment is consisted of your principal and interest. You have taxes for the property, property taxes, homeowner's insurance for the property itself. And in some cases, you even have HOA dues. If you're purchasing a condo, then you'll have an association fee that you have to pay. Even some freestanding properties still have association fees, so be on the lookout for that. But you want to consider what's your comfort range as far as how much you can pay every month. On top of that, then, take that amount and figure, you know, how does that impact your quality of life, your lifestyle in general? You know, if you like to go out to eat a lot, you like to travel, things where a certain cost of living could have a significant impact on these factors. So just have a very realistic conversation with yourself on what that budget looks like and what you're truly comfortable with. Next in line, do you have the money you need to buy a home? Purchasing a home is expensive. Outside of your down payment, there's a significant amount of closing costs that go into buying a home. Everything from a home appraisal, a home inspection, attorney's fees if you're in the state that uses attorneys, seller's title charges, it adds up very quickly. It's very expensive to buy a home, so you wanna make sure that you have the money available for this. You also wanna consider that after you own a home, there's a lot of expenses that can come up as well. So just because you can get to the closing table and you're comfortable there, keep in mind the things that you need to pay for afterwards. I'll always remember when I purchased my first home, I purchased this amazing TV and I couldn't wait. There was nothing else in my house the day of closing except for this TV that had been delivered. And I sat down in the afternoon on the floor to watch TV and I couldn't see it. There were no window treatments. Things like this are expensive. There's all kinds of expenses that come up after purchasing homes. So you just want to consider your budget. Do you have enough money to get through this comfortably as well as to proceed as a homeowner from a better position? It's time to consider what you're looking for. This is the property type and the location. Are you looking at condos, townhomes, single family homes? Keep in mind, condos and townhouses can have an HOA, which is a different type of ownership. You'll have an association to deal with as well as added costs. From there, you also wanna think about bedroom count, bathrooms, and consider what are your non-negotiables. You know, when things start moving quickly, you don't wanna get pressured into the wrong property because you feel like you have to move and you start to find that you've made compromises that otherwise you wouldn't have made had you had more time. So. While you have that time up front, think about it. You know, what is it that you have to have? So this way you make sure when you get through the transaction, you end up with the property that you love. Now it's time to assemble your team. You want to get a group of professionals that you can trust and that you're comfortable working with. There are a lot of people that can be involved in the transaction. This is your lender, your real estate agent, an attorney if you're in a state that uses attorneys, home inspectors. Now I recommend that you start with your lender. Your lender is going to give you a better idea of your budget and help you understand what you can afford. This is information that's going to be important when you talk to an agent. And the agent wants to make sure that you're pre-approved or they have a loan approval. They want to make sure that, you know, should they work with you and, and move forward that you're not wasting their time. So going through, start with your lender and they, they could actually probably connect you with the real estate agent or you can talk to family and friends, coworkers, people that you trust to find, you know, someone they've worked with. 
An attorney is going to help walk you through the legal aspects of this. In certain states, the seller will use an attorney. You should use an attorney. There are some states where that's not applicable, but if you are in an attorney state, make sure you have that done up front. And then a home inspector. When you sign a contract, things move quickly and it can get stressful. So having your team up front allows you to focus more on the task at hand once you go under contract. It saves you a lot of time and it can make sure that this is a much more smooth process. Once you've selected a lender, you're going to want to look to get a pre-approval. I'm going to suggest that you take it a step further and get an actual loan approval. This will help you be more competitive in this marketplace by going through and showing the seller that there's less risk that your financing would be an issue. So when you're talking to your lender, make sure that they offer this option. This is something that me and my team have offered, and it's really been the make it or break it for a lot of people when it comes down to multiple offers. You know, the seller is going to advise, or the, the seller's agent is going to advise the seller on which offer they think is the most likely to close. That's not necessarily the highest offer. It can be the one that they just feel the most confident in, and having that loan approval in place definitely instills confidence. Now the fun part, you get to go shopping. Connect with your agent, and your agent will send you a search of available properties. They'll send you properties you can look at online, things that match the criteria that you've already discussed with them, and you're gonna get out and start looking at properties. You should also talk, uh, also talk to your agent about, you know, if they have any off-market opportunities or if they belong to any private listing networks or other sources, because this can help you stay in front of properties that you otherwise might not see. Now, when you're selecting an agent, just keep in mind, you are going to spend a lot of time with this person. You're going to be putting a lot of trust with them as well. So just make sure you have a connection there. Make sure you're working with someone who you've vetted, you've connected with, and you know that they have your best interest in mind. Once you've found a property, now it's time to structure your offer. So you're gonna talk with your agent and you're gonna talk about the details that go into the contract. And there's actually a lot that goes into this. It's not just the price you're paying for the property, but that is part of it. So you're gonna suggest how much you're willing to pay for the property, a closing date, so you'll talk to your agent about when should you look to close. 30 days is an industry standard, but in the current environment, a lot of people have been opting for quicker closes to try and make their offer more attractive. So they'll offer a, a quick close to entice the sellers. You may find yourself on the other side of that where a seller actually needs more time. So make sure to talk to your agent and get a better idea of what's gonna be successful. There's a lot of details that go into the contract. These are going to be things such as your loan application date, your appraisal date. You know, the, These are the dates where you have to have these items taken care of. You're also gonna have your final loan approval. This is called the mortgage contingency date. So you wanna know what those dates are so you can stay within the, the definition of the contract and what's expected. Now, one of the things up front, keep in mind you'll have to use an initial deposit. This is called earnest money. This is a good faith deposit that you give, the, to, the, give to the seller to show them that you're serious. And this can be anywhere from $1,000 to 5% of the purchase price. Some people feel that a higher earnest money deposit will actually better their chances of getting their offer accepted. And you'll talk to your agent about that, but just know upfront. So this is a good faith deposit that you give to the seller that is then credited towards the transaction. So structure your offer, talk to your agent about their negotiation style. Some agents like to use what are we call love letters. And these are basically you know, something from your family to the seller, telling them about your motivation to buy their property and envisioning your future there, you know, different details. Some agents don't like to deal with this. Some people think it's great. Some people think it's a waste of time. Regardless, talk to your agent about it. Work with them on their negotiation style and that will give you a better chance of getting your offer accepted based on how they're comfortable negotiating. Once you have a contract accepted, things can move pretty quickly. And this is where all that work you did up front is going to become your best friend. You prepared for this, so it shouldn't be as stressful, but there are still a lot of moving pieces. So to start, the contract will go to your lender so they can dial in the details. There'll also be a copy that'll go to your attorney if you have attorneys. And then you're going to coordinate with the home inspector. This can be done through your agent to set up a time so that the inspector can go and look at the property to make sure everything's in order. The beginning of the contract has what's called an attorney review and inspection period. And this is the time frame that you have to get a home inspector in to review the property and return the report. When you're looking over the report, this is where some people will find repair items or other negotiable items. Maybe there's something that needs to be fixed. Now is your opportunity to go back to the seller and say, well, this is an expense that I'll incur and I'd like a credit for that. So this will be a time where you might be able to negotiate and get some credits back from the seller or other repairs that could cost you money in the future. Talk to your lender at this point. This is when you finalize the terms. This is when you look to, in, in general, most times, this is when you'll lock in your interest rate and your down payment, and you'll get the loan process moving forward into the final steps. So connect with your lender, make sure that you're clear on all the terms, and then from there, you'll be able to sign the application and get things moving forward. 
your lender will order the appraisal on the property. You generally do not need to be present for that. So once you're, you've agreed on, on the terms with the lender, they're gonna go through, they'll order an appraisal. The appraiser will coordinate with the listing agent, go out to the property to get that appraisal report so that they can determine that that property is worth what you're borrowing, basically. That's the, the, main, the, the main part of an appraisal. It's actually for your lender. It's to tell us that that property is sufficient collateral for the transaction. A quick side note. A good team will be prepared to move through these steps quickly. They're going to want to make sure that they have proper communication. You would be amazed at how many deals we see fall apart because the parties aren't communicating effectively. Even though everyone wants the same thing, there's a lot of emotions that go into buying a home on both sides. It's not just as a, as a buyer, but the seller is also very anxious. So working with a team that can communicate properly is absolutely one of the most important parts. So just make sure as you're vetting your team up front, this is something that you keep in mind. Once you've gone through, the loan's approved, everything's cleared, and we're approaching the final steps, you're gonna go through and you're gonna set up a final walkthrough. The final walkthrough is when you go look at basically a final viewing of the property. This is where most likely the property will be empty, the seller will have cleared everything out, uh, unless there was anything else negotiated, and you're gonna view the property to make sure that nothing's been damaged or there's no issues. Now, make sure to take note when you go through the final walkthrough, is there anything that you thought was included that's not there. Maybe there's a fancy light fixture or something. So just make sure that you're walking through and taking a, taking a look for those items and your agent will guide you through that. Also, when you're going through and you're doing your final walkthrough, this is a great time if the, if the agent or the seller is present to talk to them about any of the mechanics in the property, right? Maybe there's a sound system, an alarm system, anything that's present that you, will, you may wanna understand better as far as the operating system. It's a great time to talk through this so that way you know, you're not trying to figure it out and stress out later when you don't have access to the people who actually set it up. And finally, you'll have the closing. The closing is when everything is final. So three days prior to the closing, you'll receive your figures from your lender. My team actually sends this out as soon as possible. We try not to wait until the last minute, but an industry requirement is that three days prior to that closing, you'll receive a closing disclosure, which will give you a breakdown of all the figures. And this is where you can talk through everything with your lender. Look everything over and make sure that it's in line. Make sure it's the loan that you were agreeing upon in the first place. All the costs are there, the interest rate and the important parts. Check your monthly payment because this is the part where it's game time and once you've signed those documents at closing, it's final. So as you go through, look through the documents, ask any last minute questions you have with your agent and then you will be notified of a date and location for that closing where you'll generally go and you're gonna sit at a title company or an escrow company. You'll sit there with one of the representatives, possibly your attorney. In some cases, this has been handled over Zoom, just depends on, on how this is going to be taking place and where you're located. But this is where you'll go through and you'll review a big stack of paperwork. That's all the legal documentation. It's basically everything you've done up till this point is like a summarized version of what's there. So you'll go through that closing package and that's where you'll sign everything to take ownership of the property. When you're going through prior to closing, you're going to, this is where you send your money. So one thing I like to point out, when you're, when you're putting your down payment and paying your closing costs, the day of closing, you're gonna send that money. In most cases, if it's a large amount of money, you can't use a check, you have to use a wire. Some states do allow you to use cashier's check or certified funds, but make sure you're aware of how the money has to get there. And more importantly, make sure you're aware of how you're getting that money there as far as your financial institution goes. I've worked with clients before that have smaller credit unions or banks where their money is held and they don't have traditional wire setups or worse yet, they had to be in person at that branch to actually send that wire, only they were nowhere near any branches. So make sure you know up front, where's your money coming from? How do you get that money? So that way, as you get closer to the closing table or at this point in the transaction, you're able to send that money. We'll always ask to tell clients to send a little bit more than you need. So this way, when you get to the closing, any overage will be refunded to you directly at the table. And that's where everything is finalized. You'll go through, you review everything, you sign your documents, and you should walk out with a smile and your keys in hand. As you can see, there's a lot that goes into buying a home. And I hope that this video helps. If you like what you heard, please make sure you subscribe to our channel, smash that like button, and drop any comments or questions you have down below.